Um. <clears throat> hmm. I see that you're blinking. Must be a Taurus. Scorpio. Hmm. Same thing. Oh, you enjoy water? Yeah, I drink water like every day. I love water. It's your earth sign. It makes sense. Well, you know what? I was lying before. I'm actually a Capricorn. Mm-hmm. Something only a Capricorn would do. <laughs> before we dive in, what exactly is astrology? First off, it shouldn't be confused with astronomy, the scientific study of space, including all the objects in space, like black holes, Mars, Saturn, dwarf stars, stars like Ryan Reynolds, and <laughs> Matt Damon, who seems to be stuck in space a lot. Astrology, on the other hand, is the study of movements and relative positions of all the things in space called celestial bodies, like the sun, the moon, the stars, and planets, and how this affects human affairs and the natural world, also known as your fortune. After doing a lot of research, I found that this is a pretty heated topic with some diehard fans on both the yay and the nay side of astrology. So I'm gonna give it to you straight as to why astrology has some huge gaping holes in its methodology and why there is some overlap of actual trends with human behavior and birth months. Okay, let's start with three main reasons why astrology just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Probably gonna have to bleep that. Ahem, <clears throat> numero uno. I will admit, I love checking my horoscope. I mean, I am an Aries, but you probably already knew that. I mean, I, truthfully though, when I read them, I'm always like, that's me. Oh, my, that is so me, you know, nailed it. Okay, actually, I took this one specifically off of an astrology site called astrologyzodiacsigns.com. It says this about Aquarius. It says Aquarius traits, likes, fun with friends, helping others, fighting for causes, intellectual conversation, and is a good listener. Okay guys, I'm pretty sure that describes everyone. And this is what they dislike. Limitations. Do you like limitations? Doesn't like broken promises. <laughs> I mean, come on. Being lonely, also like everyone else. Dull or boring situations. Not even gonna comment on that one. People who disagree with them. Do you like people who disagree with you? This is a very generic and super general statement. Almost anyone with a pulse could look at this and apply this fortune to themselves. This is because astrology takes advantage of the four effect, thinking super vague and general predictions apply specifically to you. Psychologist Bertman R. Four conducted a test by giving a group of students a personality questionnaire. Totally ignoring the student's answers to the questions, he gave each student the same generic evaluation. He then asked each student to rank the evaluation on a scale of zero to five on how accurate it was five as excellent and zero as totally horrible. The class average was 4.26, and this was done in 1948. This exact test has been repeated hundreds of times with the average result around a 4.2 or 84% accurate. The best part of this test is that four actually used an astrology description for his test. So the evaluation of what he gave to his students was an actual zodiac. So he just like looked at the paper, read the zodiac and was like, aha, I'm gonna use this one. And he gave that exact same evaluation from the zodiac to all the students. What this tells us is that people do a great job, solid B range actually, of making sense out of an experience that has very loose to no connectivity. Humans love to connect the dots and make our outside world make sense. Even if we're making sense, out of nonsense. And what really drives home this behavior is that people tend to accept questionable, even false statements about ourselves if we deem them positive Love or that. flattering enough. I mean, <laughs> I know I'm the most beautiful scientist. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right, Sam? 
Am I right? Oh, so, yeah, see, see, I believe that. It was a part of the culture. Number two, drink oh, the Kool-Aid. Yeah. It tastes great. Astrology also falls victim to confirmation bias, which is the type of selective thinking whereby one tends to notice and look for what confirms their beliefs while ignoring what contradicts their beliefs. This is also done totally independently, regardless of the truthfulness or falsity of the information at hand. So if your horoscope says you're going to make great relationships this week, you'll most likely be very open to making new relationships, thus confirming your beliefs that this is your fate for the next seven days. Scientist Peter Wasson tested this back in the 1960s by asking subjects to guess the patterns of a series of numbers. He found that most people tried to prove their hypothesis rather than falsify it. This was found to be the case because as much as possible, people don't want to break their own rules. My rule is, you're gonna watch this video and share it 100 times. And that should be your rule too. Take a look at this fortune. I got it from the same astrology website, the one that we used earlier. This, this is what it says. It says, quote, Aquarius born are shy and quiet. But on the other hand, they can be eccentric and energetic. Now, not only is that like super broad, but specifically with this example, all week long, you'll be looking for instances where you are eccentric and energetic, like after you drink coffee. And then again, you'll be looking for the times that you're shy and quiet, like at 5 p.m. when you're tired as hell, just got out of work, and don't want to talk to anybody in the elevator. So you'll like specifically be looking for these things because that is your given fortune. Number three. Astrology takes your birth month and makes predictions about your life, sort of, kind of, based on the sun, the moon, and the stars, and other planets, and stuff that's basically off of Earth. My immediate question here is, what is the mechanism at work here? Is it temperature due to the seasons, or the amount of UV rays hitting your skin, or potentially the difference in the weak force of gravity? Like, what is it that is making astrology work? Some astrology sites claim the mechanism at work here is caused by variations of UV light. However, there is little correlation to month in UV intensity as UV ray levels change due to solar flares, change in our ozones, and altitudes independently of the month. Also, how would you factor in sunscreen? Like, if your parents put on sunscreen during pregnancy or on you as a newborn, this would completely destroy the mechanism and predictive power at work here. Okay. So let's now say that astrology works on the principle of date and time, right? Like just date and just time. If this were the case, the zodiac would totally change if not accounting for leap year. This seasonal drift would make July go from the summer to the spring in about 300 years. But this is something humans did to autocorrect our calendar. This type of calendar is called the Gregorian calendar, which makes keeping the time and date easier and more normal. However, space, like does not care at all about how us earthlings number the years. The earth will actually continue to go back and forth between an elliptical and circular orbit around the sun every 100,000 years. This also affects how extreme the seasons are. So if we're going by temperature then, now we're in a totally different ballpark. If astrology were based on temperature alone, then everyone born in South America, Australia, Africa, or the entire Southern Hemisphere would have the opposite zodiac sign of their Northern counterpart. And I guess people at the equator just wouldn't have a zodiac at all. Or maybe it'd be like, like, like a hybrid, like, like a Scorpius or a, or a Gemicorn. <laughs> I think being a Gemicorn would be pretty awesome. Now, let's throw the 300 pound science gorilla into the mix, NASA. NASA doesn't exactly like astrology. On its website, it straight up calls out astrology and says that it's a myth. <laughs> Lols. NASA also did some research of its own on the topic and published an article stating that back in the day, the Babylonians actually omitted the zodiac sign called Ophiuchus that aligned with the sun for 18 days to make each zodiac coincide with the 12 months. The Babylonians also didn't account for the shift in the Earth's axis, which now 3,000 years later makes someone born on August 4th under the sign of Cancer, not Leo. So that's confusing. I wonder if this forgotten zodiac sign is kind of like the captain planet of the zodiacs, like everything combined in one, or he's like the all-powerful bipolar monster of the zodiacs. He's like Capra 
cancer. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So is there any correlation to birth month and how we feel, behave, or what our future looks like? Many studies have shown that there is absolutely zero connectivity between our birth month and our characteristics. One scientific study out of Indiana University compared six astrologer experts to a test group of non-astrologers, finding there was no difference in how they matched people's birth charts to personal data. Another study, initially not designed to test astrology, followed the life of 2,000 twins who were born within minutes of each other. The test looked at 100 different characteristics, including occupation, anxiety levels, aggressiveness, sociability, IQ, and strengths in the arts, sports, and mathematics. At the end of the study, scientists failed to find any correlation to birth month and traits of the subjects. Astrology roasted! But wait, there is more. Just when you thought birth month and traits were not connected at all, there's another study. Coming from Semmelweis University in Budapest, from my motherland, I'm Hungarian, shows personality might actually be influenced by birth month. Here's how this works. The study focuses on connections between seasonal influence chemicals produced by the mother during pregnancy and how these chemicals affected the baby's overall moods later on in life. The researcher Xenia Ganda is quoted as saying, quote, biochemical studies have shown that the season in which you are born has an influence on certain monamine neurotransmitters, such as dopamine and serotonin, which is detectable even in adult life. She went on to say, quote, this led us to believe that birth season may have a longer lasting effect. Our work looked at over 400 subjects and matched their birth season to personality types in later life. Basically, it seems that when you are born it may increase or decrease your chance of developing certain mood disorders, end quote. Now the sample selection was small and seasons are different all over the world, but here's what was concluded. Those born in the spring were found to be incredibly positive, like me! I was born in the spring, see? Ah, oh, science, I love you. Whereas people born in summer were also very positive, but experienced more mood swings. What? <laughs> That's crazy. Those born in the fall had a reduced tendency for depression compared to winter babies, and those born in the winter months were found to be less likely to be irritable compared to all other seasonal births making those born in the winter <laughs> super chill. <laughs> Another study by the University of BC's Sauter School of Business suggests babies born in March or April are twice as likely as those born in June or July to become CEOs. The study explains that this has more to do with the structure of the school year than celestial aligning. Children who are born in the spring tend to be the older children in the classroom. The older students are taller and slightly more developed, which causes favorability of placing them in positions of leadership early on in their schooling. So from an early age, these kids are basically being groomed to be leaders. So what do you guys think? Is astrology real? Is there any connection between birth month and your future based off of the predictive powers of the newspaper Zodiac? Let me know in the comment section below. And I wanna know, has your Zodiac ever been like spot on? Or do you guys just think like it's just like total garbage and just like don't even bother with it? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button because we have new videos every Tuesday and Friday. On Tuesdays, we have 27 facts and regular Nickipedias. And on Fridays, we have the show, Will It Blow? And then every once in a while, we're just gonna be dropping a new show called Social Science. It's gonna be like a surprise. We're just gonna like, Randomly one day be like Wednesday, Blah, have that one. It's really cool, it's really interesting. We like dive in on like different social situations and we weigh in on like what's the best way to approach them, like the weird, awkward type situations. Anyways, thank you for watching and we'll see you really soon.